aim to motivate and inspire viewers to enjoy the clothes they wear as an expression of their personality and their beliefs. This is the Slow Wardrobe. Come and have a look. Hello, welcome to episode 57 of the Slow Wardrobe podcast. My name is Linda and I'm your host. In this week, we have another combination episode of a short-ish uh, knitting update followed by um, a layer cake section. In the layer cake section this time I'll show you lots of possibilities to create festive outfits specifically showing off our limited edition festive duster. However I hope that even if the dusters are not for you then maybe you already have a layer cake duster or, or maybe you just see ideas of interesting combinations of garments, be they layer cake or not, that will inspire you to put your own twist on your current wardrobe and create a festive outfit for the month of December. So before we get into layer cake though, let's have a look at what I've been knitting the past two weeks. Right, my knitting. Well, you see my finished objects behind me. This one is, well, both of them are not new to you. This was the, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, this was the uh, Mystery West Knits Mystery Knit Along Shawlography, which I uh, finished very recently. Uh, but this is the finished object. I keep thinking a good name of it would have been Carousel. I don't know why, but maybe it's also the kind of colors that I've used. I've um, held um, different soliloquy colors together, my, my uh, three-ply soliloquy together with um, my three-ply linen yarn. So that was a very dark bluey green color, specifically picked to go with magpie the new blue black color of layer cake so shawlography or my version of shawlography will definitely make a couple of appearances in some of the next couple of podcasts because it's a, a lovely project to show of course with the color magpie what i'm wearing here just jumping ahead is um, not specifically something that I'm showing in the next section, but sometimes I get questions about what, I, what I'm wearing in the knitting section. So I've, I'm actually wearing my magpie love dress underneath and then a small magpie um, step top on top. This is a sample that I made to see how it wears, but the magpie step tops are going to come through uh, early next year in the step top selection so it'll be coming still back to the knitting my um, exciting new finished object again you've seen this before but I finally finished it is the Marja sweater by Yugo Okamoto I'll move it over a little bit so you can see it's got these really big wide sleeves I didn't actually pay much attention to that because to be honest, on the pattern, you don't really notice it in the photography. You don't really notice how wide these sleeves are. And I've actually not made them quite as wide as they're supposed to be. There are supposed to be even more stitches in the bottom section of these sleeves. But considering I'm already holding two yarns together, a four ply together with the pink, the bright pink linen three ply, that I'm using uh, throughout held together. Um, I thought it was all getting too wide and too heavy. The other thing that I've done is I've made these sleeves slightly shorter than the pattern calls for. They're supposed to be full length sleeves and I've made them kind of in between three quarter length and bracelet length because again because they're so bulky I figured that if I make them full length they just become very cumbersome to wear and even with regular sleeves 
I tend to have the um, tendency to push them up, which is why I like the three quarter length sleeves of um, a step top and the uh, love dress so much. So I tend to push my sleeves back and therefore figured that if a sleeve is this voluminous, it'll really bother me if it goes all the way down. I do like sleeves that pull over my hands, but only if the whole sleeve is more fitted towards the bottom. So uh, wearing it, I'm really pleased with it. I've actually pinned it to the shoulders of this mannequin it just about sits on her because of course she's only got half shoulders to begin with and they're a lot smaller than mine so this jumper of course is knitted to a size that really works for me out of the three sizes that the pattern comes in this is the biggest size and i'm about to show you the modifications that i've made that i've spoken of before the one of the modifications of the jumper is to put some extra short rows in the top section of the back to compensate for the neckline so that it doesn't hang too low. Of course, on this little lady, it does hang low because she's so small. But on me, I'll put some photographs together. Maybe I can even show them here if I manage it. Should be able to. So here is a photograph of me wearing the jumper and you can see that it doesn't sit as low on me as it does on the mannequin. But I also have added extra rows. I don't know if you can see that in both this section and the bottom section. So all three sections are slightly longer than the ones in the front. And as a result, you get that diagonal line shorter in the front, longer in the back. And I think that looks really nice, especially since it is combined with such a wide jumper because it is a very large size, large on me as well. Look at that width. It's a very wide and oversized jumper. And I liked the idea of having a swingy back, especially with all this drapey fabric. So there's my finished object. And I actually just finished it yesterday evening. So now I have a decision to make as to what to knit next. I will show you um, a quick work in progress as well that I worked on a little bit yesterday when I was out and about. And that is a sock that I started knitting in spring of this year. I think I started knitting it in May and I haven't even finished the first one yet. I've only been knitting on this sock whenever I was together with my pal when he was doing some of his fly fishing. That's when I've been knitting in the Scottish borders, for example. And I'll show you once again. This is the sock blanket that I'm knitting from. So that is still a work in progress. And I now have a choice to make as to what my next big project is going to be. I have a choice of two. First of all, you may remember a stripy jumper that I knitted a couple of years ago now and that I've shown a number of times, a design by Jackie Bogg. I'll show a photograph of the jumper here. And I knitted it from one of her kits, Jackie Bo Bogg uh, hand dyes hot butter yarns. And her main yarn is a beautiful, beautiful, lovely, sport weight i will put the yardage underneath here anyway so the stripy jumper is knitted with that yarn i loved knitting with it and um jackie said well if you ever want to do another one of my kits give me a shout and so i did and i picked this jumper it's called the october it's fair isle throughout so lots of different colors i think it is absolutely a adorable and I would love to knit it for myself. I'd probably go for a big size again and go for a boxy oversized shape. But there's another choice of jumper that I would like to knit for my husband. And that is called the Halibut. I'm showing it to you here. Uh, it's a new pattern by Caitlin Hunter. 
and um, I'm probably going to knit that using uh, John Arban Knit by Numbers in very similar colors to this original. I've shown this to uh, my husband already. He loves the original colorway. So those are the kind of colors that we're going to go for. Um, however, I have to decide which one comes first. Am I going to knit the halibut first or am I going to get stuck in to the October or maybe even knit them side by side and pick up the halibut when I fancy something simple because a lot of that is just knitting the round stockinette and when I'm in the mood for color work I work on the October. Let me know what you think. I will let you know in next episode what I've chosen. Now just before we move on to layer cake there's one other thing that I'd like to share with you and that is a sock blank that Sharon from Five Moons Yarns very recently sent me after I had been ooing and eyeing over the photographs that I saw of the um, Yarndale stand where Sharon had some of my yarns, the um, Yak Blend 2 and some of the linens on her stand, as well as a sample of the new love dress. So I see the um, photographs of her stand and I saw these sock blanks and one of the ones that I saw was this one. I mean, come on, look at this. The base that she has dyed this on is her Luna Plus 4-ply, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylos, nylon. So it's a lovely, strong 4-ply for socks. And this colorway is called Rose Chintz. Now, I noticed this yarn when I had it lying in my dining room earlier this week when we had all the remembrance services. And I mean, look at the flowers in here. Does that look like red poppies or not? Obviously, they're meant to be looking like red roses, rose chintz. But it really reminded me of poppies. So I thought, oh, I must show this to you. There are lots of other colorways as well. This was just the color that, that jumped out at me. And I will keep you posted when I start knitting on it. This is definitely going to be a pair of socks. So more of that later. Just wanted to share that to you. Oh, and by the way, uh, Sharon, of course, sells her yarns on the Slow Wardrobe website. So you'll be able to find these sock blanks on my website if you're interested. Highly recommended. Right, so that's it for my knitting antics this time. Let's get stuck into festive layer cake and layer cake styling ideas. Like I said before, um, very often uh, those ideas can be used and applied to lots of non-layer cake garments. A lot of the things that I talk about are universal truths as in full uh, length outfits in one color, have an elongating effect, things like that. So I hope that there are useful and inspiring ideas for you in there. For now, enjoy. So more festive layer cakes this week. I started with some ideas of taking a standard layer cake and then changing or styling it up to turn it into more of a festive outfit two weeks ago. And this time I am specifically focusing on the um, limited edition dusters that I've just brought out this past week. The pre-order runs until uh, this coming Sunday, which is going to be the 21st of November. And the reason that we have that cutoff date is that, of course, we am going to make them and send them out to you all before the holidays are upon us. 
in uh, the farthest flung places. I will not rely on the postal services like I tend to do, but I will use courier services for the last parcels to leave in December to make sure that they're with you in that critical third week of December before everything kind of grinds to a halt over the holidays and the New Year weeks. So, um, all the European orders are going by courier already. I have changed moving from the postal services to couriers in Europe this past uh, these past months because there was too much going wrong with the postal services in the various countries. I had problems in uh, Germany, uh, in Italy, in Holland, I think as well. So. I'm not relying on the local postal services to sort out things like taxes and stuff. So uh, couriers throughout Europe already, which is why the courier prices have gone up, the uh, postal prices have gone up, um, but also couriers now to um, uh, the US um, and probably to Australia as well. I have to see whether I can make that work, but the bottom line is you will have your parcels before Christmas. I will, uh, in the next newsletter, which is going out on the 26th of November, I will spell out the latest postage dates for everywhere uh, because we'll be getting close to that point then. So, um, and of course, there's also a cutoff date for make to order layer cakes because obviously we have to make them before we send them out to you. So I will give clear uh, dates for that in the next newsletter. But if you're not a newsletter subscriber and you don't want to be one, then I will, of course, post those deadlines on the news on the website as well. So uh, festive layer cakes. Apart from the uh, dusters, I've also got some uh, really nice and bright and festive obi belts. I am wearing my magpie uh, love dress here in the regular length and you can see how short it goes on me, almost knee length when I add an obi belt to that. So of course I'm using that on the narrowest part of the dress to pull around me and one tip with an obi belt, because it goes around your waist twice, you wrap it from the front to the back and back again. If you want to make sure, if you like the idea of just having this single knot here and you want to make sure that the obi belt doesn't move or slip when you move, then of course you can add either a safety pin in the back or a knot. You can knot it in the back and then bring those two uh, ends back to the front to just do a single knot here. Having said that, if you wear your obi belt high, like I am, I've got it just below the bust, as you can see. And what I've done is I've put around the silver side on the outside and then flipped both the ends over in the back. I haven't knotted them or anything, just flipped them over and brought them back to the front to show that little bit of uh, contrast, because of course, there's magpie on the back of this fabric. So it marries really well in an outfit like this. I have a couple of these belts left, but they're going very fast. So if by the time I public publish this uh, podcast, they're gone, then I do apologize. They were uh, quite a limited edition. So um, have a look. Um, there are also uh, options with uh, colors like charcoal and um, black gingham, for example, and steel that create a very similar look to this one. So see if there's something there you like, if you like this kind of look. And just to finish what I was saying with the obi belt, I'm wearing it so high, I've noticed that when you wear it high like this, it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't actually move. It doesn't untie itself because it's wrapped around your ribs. I've talked about that before and your ribs are quite a stiff little barrel. So there's not move much movement in your torso there. That movement is lower down around your waist. So it stays put even without that knot in the back that I was suggested you could consider. And uh, because it's higher up here, it stays nice and flat as well. It doesn't crumple up when I sit down. So 
OB belt and a magpie dress to start with. Um, if I would like to add a layer to this, then of course I could grab one of the limited edition dusters. So let me do that and let me show you how they move and sit. I'm so pleased with them. So here's the long one, the only long festive one that we are producing in Quicksilver. Some of you may be familiar with this fabric because Quicksilver is the same fabric, the same linen, which is all pre-shrunk as per usual, that I used last year for the large shawls. I think there's one left, which I've posted on the website. So if you fancy this as a large wrap, it's two and a half meters long and 75 centimeters wide, which is two and a half foot wide and about eight foot long. So it's really nice and generous as a wrap, but look how this moves as a duster, you guys. Isn't it glorious? And like I said last time, with the contrast in colors, it looks fantastic in a contrasting outfit. I'm gonna show you now a bunch of outfits. Some are contrasting, some are neutral, some are all one color and some are bright because of course we don't have to go black and white or variations of black and white. When it's a festive holiday, you can go as bright and as colorful as you like. And with layer cake, of course, that is very easy to achieve. Now, before I go into these other outfits, the other thing that I will show you is this same outfit, but then with the short Quicksilver duster, because we're doing this particular one in both long and short. Here we go. The short one. Quicksilver as well. I'll show it to you with other outfits. But here it is with a regular length love dress and an obi belt. Want to see more? Okay, let's tone it down and go for a very neutral pale palette. And let me know what you think of it. Duster number two. Jupiter. And look at this fabric. It's completely double sided. So all the facings are stitched in a way that you can see that other side of the color right from the edge of the jacket. So the outside is this very pale undyed linen with white and the inside is the reverse white linen with the very pale dots. And I've teamed that here with a long tulip dress in natural undyed linen and a large step top. And as you can see, most of the step top disappears underneath the duster, but you see bits of it peeping out. And even with those very similar colors, you really get the effect of the step top and the different lengths of it, together with the flowy swing of the duster over the top. Now, the other thing to point out, I don't know how well you can see this on screen, but there's actually a slight color difference between the dress and the step top. And that is just to point out to you that undyed linen isn't always exactly the same color. There are small color variations, and that's just literally from one batch of linen to the next. So when you dye that, you get slight color variations in the different colors that are dyed over the top as well. That is because we're working with natural fibers. And that is something that I really like, those small variations. But if you are ordering one than, more than one garment in the same color, if I can, I will always match up those colors. So that kind of small color vari variation that I've got here, I will try to avoid that when you would order these two garments together, unless you tell me that you don't mind and it's fine. And if I'm kind of desperate in terms of timing, I may contact you to double check that that's okay. But I won't just 
grab any two garments and send them out to you. I'll always apply that sensitivity to it. So just to tell you that up front. Now, in terms of this combination, of course, this would be warmer because I have a dress and a step top and a duster over the top. So I've got two layers on my arms. It's nice and cozy. And I can then take the duster off and still have a complete outfit without showing any bare arms. However, if I would go for a day to night outfit, then this could very well be my daytime outfit and then replacing the step top with the duster for evening. So let me show you that. There it is. Lost the step top. So this is just a duster over the top of a natural linen tulip dress, a long one. I don't know whether I mentioned that already. This is the long dress on me. And um, I hope you forgive me for keeping on the black tights and little black shoes that I've put on at the start. And I'll just keep those on throughout. In reality, if I would wear black tights and black shoes with a light colored outfit, then I would balance that with either maybe a black hairband or some black accessories. So I would bring the black back somewhere else in my outfit, a little scarf or a shawl, for example, to, to balance things and to bring the black into the outfit somewhere, even if it's only in a small way. It could even be a couple of bangles in black. So um, I'll keep those on just to make it easy throughout. <laughs> I'm doing so many changes already, so I hope you bear with me. Now, Moving on from this very neutral palette, let me add a different color step top that still keeps things very neutral and very pale and also looks really festive for this particular season, if those pale colors are your thing. Sweet Pea step top, a large one. You can tell by it being slightly longer than the duster. I'll show you a small step top in one of the other outfits as well. So you can see how that relates to the dimensions of a short duster. But isn't this a lovely outfit? And if you then combine that with light and bright and sparkly, if you have them, uh, accessories, then you have a lovely, lovely festive outfit. It reminds you more of snow and ice rather than all the real dark colors and it's really effective and then you can of course bring if you like that in one of the checks i mean this multi-check the pale multi-check that we have has got these pale colors in it so it's a really nice combination if instead of a dress you prefer a pair of baggies, for example, then this outfit with the small check baggies in that pale colorway would be lovely and festive and really appropriate for um, a, a lovely day or evening with family around the end of this year. And you don't have to worry with these clothes if you get any splatters or stains on it. You just put some stain remover on, whack it in the washing machine and you're good to go. So if you're one of those people who says, oh my gosh, I can't wear light colors because I would just get stains all over it. That's one of the advantages of these linen layer cakes. They're pre-shrunk, they're hard wearing and you really can get stains back out of them. So just to keep in mind, your layer cakes will withstand the worst food fights that you could have <laughs> if you're into that kind of stuff this season. So um, moving on, I'm very slowly going to add some more color to this. And I was talking about baggies instead of the tulip dress. So let me put some baggies on. For the many lovers of teal amongst you, here is a pair of the teal herringbone baggies together with the sweet pea. Isn't it glorious? Of course, sweet pea is like a light version of teal. Up close, you would be able to see that it's a light teal color woven together with the palest of lilacs to create this color. 
And of course, in the baggies, the teal color is woven together with natural linen, with undyed linen, which of course pulls it into this neutral palette. And you can see how this is neutralized by those light colors and the lighter color in the herringbone is being brought out. So what happens if I do the opposite? Instead of going for this sweet pea together with the teal, what happens if I put teal together with it? I'll show you. And it's a smaller size step top, if I've got it correctly. Let me check. <laughs> I think it's a smaller size step top so that you can see the difference between the long, the large and the small. And here it is. I was right. It is the smaller step top in teal. And you can see that length difference both in the front and in the back. You still see the points here of the step top in the back sticking out at the corners, but more of the step top disappears inside the duster. And in both cases, they look great together. And it means that no matter what size step top you wear, you can team a duster with it, either small or long. So see what happens as well in terms of color, how the teal in the baggies is brought out more by the teal top. And then the whole outfit goes together beautifully because of course this teal has that natural color in it as well. So like I said, a festive layer cake does not have to be in black and white or neutrals or naturals only. You can go and take it in any direction and it's just how you dress it up, how you style it, the, um, the, the, the more festive or the less festive it goes. So you can go for from everyday to festive in a heartbeat really. And that's the, the main point behind it. Adding something like this, which is more of a delicate linen in the sense that, you know, you wouldn't go gardening in this, whereas with most of your other layer cakes you can. But with this kind of um, weave, which reminds me a little bit of a damask, you know, damask tablecloths and the way they have different kind of weaves to create texture and show patterns. That's what they've done with the weave of this linen as well as that glorious sheen that it has, which is a result of it being wet spun. So it's a little bit like comparing um, the way that different wools are spun, worsted spun versus woolen spun. Woolen spun is very fluffy and crinkly and using the bounce in the hairs that make up the wool to create volume, whereas in worsted spun, all the fibers are lined up and straight and you get a much sleeker, slicker um, yarn that is stronger as well because all those fibers are lined up and strengthen each other. And worsted spun suits, which is an old fashioned um, reference to the uh, nice thin wool uh, men's suits that um, used to dominate the market when they first started worsted spinning uh, wool is a, a good comparison to the wet spun of the linen here. The wet spun linen is incredibly strong. So my three ply linen yarn, you cannot break it by hand. You'll really, you'll cut your fingers before you would get to break the yarn. I haven't been able to break it. It is incredibly strong. And that's, of course, what um, really contributes together to together with the weave to how hard wearing the linen is. However, it depends on how you weave it and those flat weave, those tight flat weaves that I use for the plain linens create an incredibly strong fabric, whereas this with um, uh, looser weaves and more of a satin weave, then of course the the strength of weaving and pushing all those yarns together across each other changes and you end up with a fabric that is more drapey and more flowy. You can see that in its movement and of course you wear it differently because it doesn't have that super hard wearing quality that the um, 
smocks and tabards, for example, have. So just a little bit of background there. However, that ability to get out stains and to wash it and throw it in the dryer, all of that doesn't change. I do recommend with something like this to wash it cool if you can. I also recommend to air dry it rather than put it in the dryer. Machine drying, you have to really press it if you want to get this look back. And with air drying, that becomes easier. The other thing, of course, is you can avoid any of that care if you um, dry clean something like this. And with whereas you may throw all your other layer cakes in the washing machine you can choose to say okay well i will treat this differently i will dry clean that the choice is yours all the options are there because it's still linen at the end of the day okay enough with all the lectures let's have some more outfits shall we so uh, moving on from this colorful outfit i am going to slightly darken this but still keep this light duster on before we move on to the next color. Come with me on my journey. Keep it at neutral and quite sweet, quite soft still. This is an outfit in steel. I've grabbed the biggest, the extra large palazzo trousers. Very nice and roomy and lovely and generous together with one of the petite length love dresses in a size one, which is the layer cake size that I normally wear. And so you get this full length outfit and that's something to keep in mind. If you go all one color all the way in length, you always end up with a very um, a column like silhouette, which um, gives the idea of more height and less width if that's what you're after. So it, it goes quite statuesque regardless of your height. That's one of the advantages of wearing a play suit. That full length in one color changes your silhouette. And then together with the fact that that doesn't have any sleeves, if you then wear a relatively, relatively neutral top, you have a lovely straight long silhouette with some curves all in the right places, thanks to the sturdy and structured way that the linen moves. However, you get that with more layer cakes. If you look at the shape of this dress, that slight balloon shape, the way it nips in a little bit at my waist and then flows out again and in, those curves are all there on purpose, of course. That is no coincidence. And the um, seams that we have running here, these princess seams are there to allow us to put more curvature in as well. And that's one of the things that helps these dresses, despite their dolman sleeves, sit better around a bust. We can put some shaping in there. I've talked about that in the past already as well. So go back to the uh, love dress episodes if you um, want to hear more about that. For now though, doesn't this look lovely? Back to that really neutral look of the Jupiter duster and teamed with a slightly darker color, but still all soft, 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 no harsh contrasts. And it's a lovely outfit. Now, if you're not into the dusters at all, then you could just go with this, just have the trousers and the dress in the same color to create that beautiful tall statue. And then if you fancy dressing that up a little bit, either with some jewelry or a scarf or a colorful obi belt. With this, you could of course go for that silvery obi belt that I was showing with the um, magpie on the back, but a colorful obi belt could work as well. I'll quickly show you one. Here is the small check with the chartreuse on the back, small check obi belt with combined with chartreuse and look at what that pop of color does with the outfit. Now, because this is the petite length dress, of course, then pulling that obi belt around it brings it up even further. Look at that. The pockets are nearly at waist height. Or, well, they are at waist height on me. And that's quite a cute little look, the way that that then 
stands out and it creates a really cool and funky and fun silhouette. So if I would have the um, regular length love dress, then it would be a little bit longer. This is clearly above my knee and the uh, regular length would be more like on my knee and slightly below the knee without the belt. So it's a choice and a different look. And of course, if you are um, a, of a, a more average height than I am, then the way that the regular dress sits on me is going to be more similar to the way that the regular dress would sit, or the petite dress would sit on you. But you have that option of playing with those different dress lengths. And you can see here how they change when you combine them with something like an obi belt. So let me keep going. I'm going to take this one back off and show you another duster. I'd say probably out of the three different fabrics, the uh, Jupiter, the um, uh, Mercury that I haven't shown you yet, the darkest of three, and this Quicksilver um, uh, sparkly linen, I think that this is probably the one that can go with the widest range of outfits. It looks very silver, but, and very gray, but the um, it, that's partially due to the silver Stellina that's in here because it's actually woven together with a natural undyed linen. You wouldn't believe it, but this is undyed linen again, not gray. It's the silver that makes it look gray. But because of that, it's got that same chameleon-like um, ability to go with a very wide range of different color combinations. So let me keep changing the outfits underneath to show you some more festive options and right now I'll keep going with the Quicksilver. Slowly adding more contrast. Same palazzo still, the extra large steel palazzos, but now worn with a love dress still the shorter love dress, the petite one, and this time in the charcoal stripe. So the steel and the lighter color in the charcoal stripe really pick up on each other. And then lightening the whole outfit again with the Quicksilver duster. How about darkening those trousers a bit more? Okay. Really keen to show you how the pinstripe baggies that I'm wearing and the charcoal stripe love dress, the stripes look very similar from a distance. They're not actually the same, but visually they're very similar. It's one of those things that I really like with fabrics. I love it when two colors are the same, but textures are different. In this case, the colors are very similar. The stripes look similar, but then up close, you can see that they're not. I love those kind of tricks of the eye. So a stripey outfit, again, with that Quicksilver uh, short um, duster. Let me show it to you with the long duster as well. Look at that. The front of the duster, front length of the duster is just about the same length or so very similar to the length of the petite love dress. And then of course it sweeps down and swoops out in the back. But another really nice elongating silhouette here with that long duster over the uh, stripes that go the full length of my body with the dress and the trousers combined. So I will show you another nice long silhouette, but um, going back to a tulip dress, I've only shown that one uh, neutral colored tulip dress, but what about one of the other standard dark colors that we have that could also very easily be dressed up? with a duster like this one. Let's go. Another glorious combination, I think. Long quicksilver with a long 
dress in the dark moth dark moth that color that um i recently found out some people it really shows like a gray on their monitor it's not gray it is a mauve woven together with a black so what you end up with is this dark very moody very aubergine but soft dark dark uh well a mauvey purple i can't really call it a purple it's not really purple it's eggplant or or aubergine really um, and as such another wonderful neutral color to pair with lots of other colors in your layer cake or non-layer cake wardrobes and i think a fantastic color together with the quicksilver so um, adding to this dress of course if you don't like wearing dresses and showing any legs first of all this dress of course is quite long so you don't show that much leg but even with a long dress like this you can add baggies which i often do let me put them back on i just grabbed those same pinstripe baggies again but then when i put this duster on i realized that of course apart from adding more length to my silhouette with a dark color the lights in the in the pinstripe of course picks up on the light color of the the duster and that i think is a very nice and effective way like i've said so often in pulling an outfit together now if you like the idea of all one length then of course you could also wear these baggies with like a smock for example in the pinstripe and go all pinstripe but with more than one garment and adding a duster to that but i've waited long enough <laughs> let me finally show you the third color of fabric of duster here we go here is drum roll I don't know why actually because it's not my favorite or anything I guess it's just because I've waited so long to show it to you here is mercury it wasn't actually a conscious decision to show mercury mercury this late in the lineup I've just tried to go through different transitions of different color combinations and this is where it kind of fell into the lineup isn't it glorious though so picking up beautifully on my pinstripes here down below and of course I could show more pinstripe if I wore a regular length dress for example or one of the tunics the possibilities are really endless or even just a little vest top rather than having two layer cakes underneath you could just do a little vest top, a silk little number, for example, or even a mini tabard works extremely well as well as a short silhouette. And that could be a pinstripe. Anyway, I digress. The idea was to show off Mercury here in the short duster and Mercury on the inside is silver in color. Now, this is not the undyed linen this is a very light gray creating a silver effect on the inside and that of course can be teamed very effectively with any of the silvers and grays uh, that we have in the layer cake lineup of course very easy to imagine but it's also one of the colors that is fabulous for big contrasts so i'll show you a couple of contrasts and then at the end, I'll just throw in a little bit more color before draw drawing this to a close. Here we go. Now, the biggest contrast, of course, I have with this is white. So here we are with the white shirt. And doesn't this outfit perfectly show off how we have combined the sweep of the duster with the sweep on the hemline of that a-line shaped shirt they go really really nicely together they look fantastic together so keeping it with the high contrast but if you're not into shirts or these two layers on top of each other are just too much and too warm like i said do something sleeveless underneath i'll show you remember 
the summer smocks and tabards. White was one of them. Now, of course, you think of this as a summer, part of a summer outfit, but how about wearing it like this as an alternative to a little vest stop with a festive, festive outfit? Look at those points sticking out the different lengths, the different layers of your layer cake. Doesn't it look fantastic? Now, and then, of course, you can still bring back the new obi belt. Let me add an obi belt because an obi belt and a smock together play really nicely too. It had to be the Quicksilver and Magpie one, of course. What do we think? I'll lose the duster to show you the silhouette and what you get with it. And of course, instead of a duster like this, I could have um, a thin um, sleeved top underneath, you know, the thinner, the better the fabric. Um, something that I'm hoping to add to layer cake at some point this coming year, working very hard uh, uh, to, to try and realize that behind the scenes. So bear with me on the fitted tops. So many of you keep asking me for addresses for good fitted tops. So I'm going to do them, guys. If I can help it, I'm going to do our own range of fitted tops across all the layer cake sizes. So whether you're small or big, we'll have the fitted top for you. Anyway, <laughs> I haven't even made them yet, but I'm wor really working on it. I'm really hoping to introduce those as soon as I can this coming year. But back to this. What do we think? I think this is a fantastic uh, example of making um, an existing and very simple layer cake more festive. So before I finish up, I had to promise though to add some more color. So here comes some more color. Bam, color. I've gone for the pink, a pink step top, small step top. Of course, I've could have gone for the okra, for example. I could have grabbed a magpie dress. All of that, m most of the colors will go beautifully in an outfit like this as a contrast. But it was the pink that really grabbed my attention. So pink it is. If you like the pink theme and you think, oh, I would like more color, then of course we can do the same as what I did earlier on with the uh, teal and say, okay, let's add more pink. See, herringbone pink, for example. Now, very bright, slightly less bright because of course the herringbone is this color mixed with a neutral, lovely contrast with the top, a little bit too bright. We'll tone that down again as well. One click down in the pinks, not quite as bright, lovely and soft and subtle blush, beautiful together with the, um, I keep forgetting that, that name, I've got such a blind spot, Mercury Duster. And of course, this is a lovely other neutral, which you can then wear with a black pair of palazzos or um, a pinstripe or black um, uh, baggies, for example. I hope I have explained to you that the um, possibilities are endless. Let me bring the Quicksilver back just one more time and then I'll sign off. Just wanted to show you one more soft example where the Quicksilver tones down the brightness of the baggies and then together with that soft blush creates a wonderful combination outfit. So the choices are all yours. Look through your wardrobes, whether it's layer cake or not. There are so many combinations that you may not have thought of with your existing garments or by adding one piece like one of the dusters, for example, you can really transform what you've got already and feel 
both comfortable and festive this coming season. I hope I've given you lots of inspiration and I'll see you again soon.